Halloween is now past and the Christmas season is fully upon us. The stores have their Christmas displays out full of ornaments and decorations and all things Christmas ready for the consumers to consume. I spent months, weeks, days, more like an afternoon, compiling this year's Christmas gift guide. Things that a photographer or videographer or just overall creator may need, may want. So that's what we're gonna get into in this year's 2021 version of the Christmas gift guide. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It is bright and early here today, so I'm just gonna take a sip of my lovely cup of joe. Oh yeah, oh yeah, maybe one more. That is delicious. I just got this fresh new mug. Check this out from Steel Town Garage. I've always wanted this one. I've actually shot it months ago. If you haven't already, please like the video, subscribe down below, turn on the bell so you can get notified for future videos. And that way it just helps the algorithm push this out to more people so we can create a bigger community of like-minded people who love cameras, gear, tech, and just overall business. If you wouldn't mind, pause the video and just go down and do that and I will see you in a few seconds. A few moments later. Also feel free to check out my website, which is kylepoolmedia.com. It has a blog, which is accompanied with a lot of the YouTube videos, such as the R5 video that we just released and many other videos in the future will have a blog post to accompany it so that you can see the actual written text form of the video. It's got some pictures and it's just got an overall great feel to it. So you can learn and just follow along with this beautiful community that we're creating here. We also have presets available on the website and they are mobile and desktop versions. So feel free to check that out as well. And let's get into today's video. So I just wanna make a disclaimer before we start today's video. Personally, I don't think the holidays are necessarily just for gifting and consumerism and all that. I think that there is another aspect of the holidays that is not involved in materialistic gifting or just the act of gifting, the obligation that you feel that you have to gift someone something over the holiday season. I think the actual holidays are more about just spending time with the people that you love. If you are looking to get someone special in your life a gift and they maybe are a photographer, videographer, or just love the creative industry, this gift guide is going to be super helpful for you because we can be very difficult to buy for. Also, I just wanna say that I'm not affiliated with any of the products that I'm gonna be listing here today. I don't make any money off of if you choose to buy it or not. I'm not gonna have any links down below for you to actually click on the products. I'm gonna give you the title of what they are and more of a vague overview of that product opposed to actually trying to sell you the product. Most of these products, if not all of them, I actually currently have or own. So they actually do come from a place of, I've used it, I've tried it, I've tested it, and I actually use it on a day-to-day -day basis. So all of these are very relevant in my personal business and my career and my life. We're gonna be breaking this gift guide down into three different categories. Stocking stuffers, the how did you know I needed that gift? And the I love you, man. Slapping the bass, man. There you go. Slapping that bass, man. I slap it the piazza. Please don't do that. We're gonna start off with the stocking stuffers. The simple things, the things that any creator would want and need, but not necessarily want to buy for themselves. First on the list is a camera strap. I personally use this beautiful leather camera strap and I actually received it as a gift for Christmas or my birthday years and years ago from my sister. I can honestly say that this is probably one of the best gifts anyone has ever gotten me because I use it every single day that I shoot. It has patinaed beautifully, it is just, it's just awesome and I really love the way it feels. It feels great on my neck, like it's nice and soft. I don't think that it's ever really gonna break down too much, like it's got like a beautiful strap system here. I get more compliments on this particular camera strap than pretty much any other piece of gear that I own. So camera straps go a long way. Don't be the rookie or the noob that still uses the one that says your camera on it. Don't be that person, so get a cool camera strap. Gift number two replacement lens caps. These are something that every single photographer or video creator or anyone with a camera knows that are super important. I lose these on a day-to-day -day basis. I can never find them. The only thing that you need to do if you are buying this gift for someone is just go to their actual camera setup, probably the lens that's on their camera because it's probably their go-to lens, I would assume, and just look at the top of the lens. It'll say what the lens is, which is this is a 35 mil 1.4, and then it also will say something like 67 or 77 or whatever the size of the actual glass is on the lens. That's the size of the lens cap that you will actually buy for this particular lens. Most lenses that I have are between 67 and 77. So 
I, I have like a couple different lens caps for each lens, but some lenses are bigger, some are smaller, but just check that before you actually go buy one. Make sure that it actually is gonna fit their camera. I believe the word would be diameter. So another fun stocking stuffer could be a cheap film camera, something small or like a Polaroid camera just something like the Ilford camera that we reviewed months and months ago. It could just be like a fun thing for them to have as well as having their professional gear. They just have this fun disposable camera that comes along with them and they can take some cool film photos of like more behind the scenes kind of look. And usually those cameras are fairly inexpensive. I believe the Ilford is like $50 roughly. And then like a roll of film would be about $10. So that could be a super fun gift to get someone who is in the creative industry that they would probably really enjoy. And then the last item on the stocking stuff list is just like small props from like thrift stores. I do a lot of product photography and I know a lot of people in this community that watch my videos are very into product photography. All kinds of things are available at thrift stores such as like little books and stuff and I found some chain and I found like old cigarette holders, all kinds of fun things like that. Like legitimately anything can be used as a prop. Even go shopping with the person and just like pick some stuff out. I have tons and tons of props for product photography. Whenever I have a product shoot, I just go into my little basket of props and I just pick out one or two or make a whole little scene of things. So this can go a long way. And I know that this sounds probably pretty vague, like, oh my God, just go to a thrift store, or like go to an antique store and just get props. But like, it could be anything. I need a sip of this coffee, baby. Moving on, we are going to the, how did you know that I needed that gift? These are a little bit higher price than the stocking stuffers, but every photographer would be so grateful to get any of these things because one, they probably need them and they use them on a day-to-day -day basis. So option number one, filters. These things are so handy to have. This is an ND filter. This is an ND filter as well, just for thread size. And then this, this is a step up ring. And then this is a mist filter. So we're gonna focus more on ND filters. I think that these are super, super handy. They're called a variable ND filter. So you can actually get these with a polarizer attached to them, but this is just the ND filter. There are different stops, so you can actually turn it and you can change how dark or how light the actual subject is. For example, this is what this footage would look like with an ND filter on it. You can see the difference here. There is a massive difference. And I think it actually, it adds a cool look to it. And then you can actually like, so you can see how dark this one goes. And then obviously it brightens up as you turn it. So what this does is it actually allows you to take a lot of that harsh sunlight out of your photos or video and just, it's like putting sunglasses on your camera. Really, really good for video because when you wanna keep your frame rates at like for 24 frames a second, you wanna keep it at one over 50. It's really good because you can take a lot of the light away without putting your f-stop up to like 18. So it's super, super handy. It keeps all your lighting very consistent. And then this is what's called a step up ring. So. What I would recommend is if you're gonna get a filter or an ND filter or just any filter, get the biggest one that they offer. Usually probably like a 77. Sometimes they have bigger ones, but usually it's a 77. Then whatever lens that they have, you can get step up rings or step down rings and then get the thread size that they have. And then you can kind of build it out. So you only need to buy one filter and it can fit all of your lenses opposed to buying like 20 different filters that are, you know, you have to just keep buying more filters you can just have these step up rings, which cost like, I think they're like 10, 15 bucks, opposed to buying a $230 filter, or $300 filter, and then having to buy it again for every single lens that you own. This is a much more economical and practical way to have filters for all of your lenses. So pairing a ND filter with a step up ring is probably an amazing gift that anyone would be so grateful to have because they live on your camera and then you scratch them and break them and they just go a long way. Also, this is the mist filter. This is a moment mist filter. I've used other ones, um, but this one's really good. It's a 20%. So this is kind of what it looks like. It really flattens your footage. It gives it like a film vintage kind of look. It's called a Cinebloom filter. Um, I use this for a lot of low light situations because it has like a nice like dispers dispersion? Dis dispersing of light and when you see like a like a actual tangible light bulb or something or where a light source would come from it really like bleeds out across the photo and it looks really really beautiful opposed to just looking like a sharp little ball of fire in the back of your image next up on the list we got batteries these are super handy to have extras of 
Um, this is specifically the one for Canon. It's the Canon EOS R5 and 6 version. It also works in the R and other mirrorless bodies, but this is the one. It's got the little gold stamp on it, so that means it's for the R5 and the R6. These are amazing to have extras of. I think I have like 10 of these maybe something like that. You can never have enough because especially when you go on a shoot, if you're going on like a whole day shoot or you're doing a wedding or something, to have extra batteries is very, very important. These are fairly expensive, so any photographer would be so grateful to have extra batteries because something that like we never want to have to buy for ourselves, but it's important to have. All you got to do is just look up what camera the person you're buying the gift for has, whether it's a Canon camera or a Sony camera, and just look up that model and then just literally Google what batteries does this, why am I typing up here? This, what batteries does uh, this camera take? So that'll give you the answer to what battery you need to buy. There are different batteries for different cameras. So don't just buy one battery for and expect it to work on every camera. There are different batteries for different cameras, obviously. So next up on the old list here, we got memory cards. Now there are legitimately a million different memory cards you can get. And it kind of depends on what the person you're buying for or yourself does more of predominantly because there are memory cards kind of catered to specific things so if they're more into photography these memory cards would be great they're fairly inexpensive they literally always go on sale and yeah they're good they're great um i've never really had a problem in photography with these now if they're more into like video and they're like high production video like these would still work like on like a canon EOS r or more of a medium caliber camera, you could still get away with these specific memory cards. Um, I didn't really have a problem with them until I started really filming in like high frame rate 4K or even just like um, over a longer period of time. I started using these ones here, the Sony Tough. They're amazing. They are really, really fast. They're durable. Even when you just hold it, they feel like a really nice card. They're a lot more expensive than the Lexar version, but they are a really nice card. So. Yeah, I highly, highly recommend these Sony Tough cards. They're great. So that'd be more catered for if you were doing um, a lot more video work and it still had, your camera still had an SD card slot in it. If they are doing very high caliber video, these are probably your option here. These are the Sony Tough CF Express version. These are amazing. You can look at the read and write speeds on the side there and they're just blowing the other cards that I just showed out of the water. And yeah, I use these for any kind of 4K 120 or 8K and I have no problems with them. I absolutely love them. They're a lot bigger, but your camera also has to have a CF Express card slot. So the R6 does not have one. The R5 does have one. So know what camera they have. Just open up the little slot door here, which is here. This camera specifically takes two SD cards. You can just use one. You don't need to put two in at the same time, but they take SD cards, which SD cards are these ones here. So just something to keep in mind if you are planning on buying a memory card, just know what memory card and what specifically the person you're buying for does. If they do a lot more video work, probably get a little bit better of a memory card. If they're just doing photography work, you can get away with a lot lower caliber of a memory card because it's not as hard on the camera. And last up on the how did you know that I needed that gift, the Nifty 50. This is a lens that pretty much should live in any photographer's camera bag. It's also fairly inexpensive. So I believe that this lens is like 150, maybe $170. And it's great. Like the amount of photo shoots I've done on this lens is, is awesome. So again, just look at what camera the person that you are buying for has. If they're buying a mirrorless camera, you'll need to get an adapter for this specific lens. I'm speaking more on the Canon side, but if you have Sony, it's all the same. Um, Nifty 50, any camera brand has one and they're all fairly inexpensive. Most photographers, if they already don't have one, would be like, oh my God, that's so cool. Cause like I can actually use this based on price to actual like in field quality. It's probably the best lens on the market for the cheapest price, the best quality for that price. Next up, the I love you man section. Slip it to piss. For the sake of our relationship. Slop a to bus. Please stop, please, please stop. Thank you. Who's slapping the bath? So these items are all a little bit higher priced, but that's the whole purpose of the name of the section. I love you, man. You're only going to get this stuff for if you're buying this and like you genuinely are like, yeah, like 
this is for you. You know, I love you. This is a big deal. I'm getting this for you. These things can range from anywhere from 200 to thousands of dollars. So these are a little bit higher ticket items, but most things in the camera industry are in this price range. Um, it's just the way of the road, unfortunately. So first up on the list, a camera bag. Now, this is a little bit difficult for me because I actually don't use a specific camera bag. I use a backpack that I've converted into a camera bag. I got a bag from Lululemon years and years ago. It's got tons of pockets. It's very ergonomical. It's well built. And I've been using that as my camera bag for a couple years now. And it's not because I don't want to use a camera bag. It's just that I never found a camera bag that really fit my style and that was built well enough or that was just perfect for my style of shooting. So that's why I use a backpack. But there are tons of great camera bag options out there like the Peter McKinnon bag or anything from Nomadic or anything from Outdoorsy. So there's there's tons and tons of bags out there that you can get that would be like sufficient for someone else perhaps. But just myself, I just like, I'm not a big camera bag person. Um, the other thing that you can do is check out your local vintage stores or antique stores or thrift stores and just see what kind of bags they have. You can always repurpose a bag that just lessens your environmental footprint of consumerism, of buying new things that are being made to, well, consume. And it kind of gives you a fun project to do as well while converting the bag into a specific camera bag. All my sustainable homies out there. Next up, um, something that every single photographer or video creator or whoever wants, needs, and cannot have enough of is hard drives. So these hard drives are the Seagate version. I put green tape on them to tell me what they are because I have so many of them. I have like a whole stack of them sitting over there up to my computer, but you can never have enough of these. These are four terabyte and five terabyte versions are the ones that I buy at least. You can obviously get smaller ones, but why buy a smaller one when you can just get a four or five terabyte one? And they're really not that much more expensive. These Seagate four and five terabyte ones always go on sale. Like they're legitimately on sale every time I go and buy one. And every time they go on sale, I go and buy one. Even if I don't need one, I'm like, I will need this. And I might as well just save myself like a hundred bucks. They are fairly inexpensive for hard drives, but they can go up in price too. Like if you buy the lacy one, like the rubber orange one, they're a little bit more expensive because it's like a rugged hard drive. Most of the time hard drives are like between 70 and like $500. So this one is usually like my go-to one. I have multiple literally sitting right here in a pile. They're great and you can never have enough of them. So that is something that like, if you ever want to get someone a gift and they're in the photo and video industry, I mean, that's like a pretty safe, safe option. Next up, we're gonna pull out the camera again. This is the 35mm 1.4 Sigma art lens. This is my go-to lens, and it's actually for the quality, not that expensive. It may seem like it's an expensive lens, but anyone who gets this lens as a gift or just buys it or has it knows and will say that it is a phenomenal lens. It is my go-to lens. It lives on this camera. I bring it to every single shoot that I go on. I love the fact it goes to 1.4, so I can get like absolutely insane bokeh in the background or bouquet. And yeah, it's just a consistent lens. I use it for video and photo. It just looks beautiful. I love the focal range of 35. I think it's just, it's nicer than 50 because it's a little more versatile. I believe the price point if you were to buy this lens new is around a thousand dollars Canadian, but I got this lens used and you can get these lens used for probably in like the 700 to $900 range. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money, these lens always go on sale as well because they are an older lens. They're not stabilized and they're more of a photography lens, but I use it for videography. You can see all of my videos are pretty much filmed using a 35, at least for like something in the video, maybe not the entire video, but like a good portion of everything that I create, even usually, my main angle here is filmed on a 35. It's now being filmed on a different lens because I like this lens better for this, but because it's wider, because I can just like, but yeah, the 35 is a badass lens. It is amazing. It's great for both photo and video and anyone would be happy to have one if they already don't have a 35 mil 1.4. So next up on the list, we are talking noise canceling headphones. These are the Bose 700s and first and foremost, these look awesome. So when you actually wear them, they look great. Let me just throw them on here. So I actually legitimately could not hear anything right now, but these are my go-to headphones for all of my video editing needs. These legitimately live on my head on a day-to-day -day basis. I wear them probably for like between 
five and eight hours every single day. The battery lasts for, I think it's 15 hours, but it feels like usually like it lasts more. Also to charge them only, it takes like 10 minutes to charge it for like five hours. I got them because I was doing a ton of sound design for my video work and I needed something that um, was noise canceling to just cancel out any other noise that was in my, my condo. Nothing but amazing things to say about them. They're also like a really nice quality when you hold them, they're heavy and they come in a beautiful case. They're worth the price point in which you would buy them for. So anyone who does a lot of video work most certainly would be an amazing gift. You can also change the noise canceling from different levels. You could turn it off, you could have it at like 10%, 20%, 100%. So you can kind of dictate what you want to do with them. So cannot speak strongly enough about those specific headphones. If that's in your price range or if the person you're buying for does any kind of video work and they need to do sound design, absolute game changer. It's a game changer. It's a game changer, everyone. So yeah, try them out. Even just go into a store, put them on. They're so comfy. I love them. I wish, I wish I was sponsored by them. I wish I could give away some, some Bose headphones. And last but not least, this is not in any specific category, but just think local. Any of these things I listed, you can probably get at a local store. Even if it's like a, a chain store, you can probably get them local and support your local community or just shop at some actual local stores, local thrift stores, local clothing stores and coffee shops and breweries and things like that. Most people would be super grateful to get anything as a gift. So just think local when you are buying gifts. Um, you don't need to necessarily shop on Amazon all the time. I know Amazon is very convenient and they have lots of great things, but in terms of the overall spectrum of the world, it's better to support someone who is running a local small business and you would feel the same if you were also running a local small business. So most certainly that is something that I would recommend is to just try and shop as local as possible. Again, these are just some suggestions in my personal belief that would be great for anyone in this industry. Obviously there are so many other things that you can buy. You can go on to moment.com or somewhere like that. And they have a million different things of camera accessories, bags, actual cameras, batteries, courses, presets, and anything like that. And that is moment.com. That's a great website for all things photography and video and just like the creative space. So again, not sponsored by moment at all, but if you are, you know, wanting to just browse around a bunch of different camera things and you don't know where to go, Moment would be a great site to check out for pretty much anything I just listed on this specific gift guide. So I just wanna thank everyone for tuning in and watching and checking out this year's 2021 gift guide. If you haven't already subscribed down below, it helps this channel grow and build a larger community of like-minded people who love cameras and photography, videography, and just the creative space. So if you wouldn't mind subscribing, that would be amazing. Click the like on the video, which would help this video get out to more people and again, help this community grow. Very grateful for everyone who is here and all the new faces that we have coming in every single day. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate all the love and support I've been getting. Also, don't forget to check out the website where we have blogs posted about tons of different YouTube videos about camera gear, shoots I've been on, and just overall, this community is just growing in that way as well. So I also have presets available. So if you're looking to up your or photo editing. There are presets available. Both my 2020 and 2021 preset packs are available there. And there will be a 2022 one coming out in the near future. So stay tuned with that and I will see everyone in the next video. Peace and love y'all.